The Story of the Hunter and the Beautiful Princess Once upon a time, there was an old couple who had not yet had a child. They were very sad about that and wanted so much to have a child. One day a fortune teller came to their house and they confided their sadness to him. The fortune teller told them, Then you too will have a child. The hunter wondered, But my husband and I are both old. My wife is no longer able to give birth. I just hope to have a son. The fortune teller said again, You too will have a son, but remember one thing. Never reveal your son and number 39's profession to him. Having finished speaking, the old man disappeared. Some time later, the hunter and his wife were overjoyed. The wife became pregnant and later gave birth to a son. They cherished and cared for the boy like a treasure in the house. They never told him his father and number 39's profession as a hunter. When the boy reached adulthood, his father passed away. One day he asked his mother, Mom, please tell me, what does my father do for a living? Your father is a tree cutter who cuts firewood in the forest. He immediately put the axe on his shoulder and went into the forest to cut trees. After doing it for a while, he realized he didn't and hash 39. T have enough strength to cut again. He angrily sat down next to the road and burst into tears. A neighbor passed by and saw him and asked, What a number 39, s wrong? Why are you crying? He answered, My father is a tree cutter and a firewood splitter. I don and number 39, T feel interested in doing this at all and I and number 39. I'm not healthy enough to do it. I and number 39, I'm so sad. The neighbor immediately said, Your father is not a woodcutter. My father is a hunter. That and number 39, S Y I Don and number 39, T like cutting down trees. Go and annoy your mother until she scolds you, then you and number 39, LLCI and number 39, M. Wright. The son came home and pretended to be taciturn and said nothing to his mother. Until the mother could N and hash 39, T. Barrett and got angry. Hunter, you are an only son. Why are you angry at mom? She continued talking without paying attention to the words she uttered. So the son learned that his father was a hunter. He immediately took his bow and arrows and went into the forest. That day, he caught a bird with golden feathers. He thought to himself, Oh! It would be a pity to kill such a beautiful bird like this. I will sell it. He didn't and hash 39. T know the value of the bird. So he went straight to the market and entered a store to invite them to buy it. The shopkeeper said he didn't and hash 39. T have enough money to buy the bird. He took the bird to the second store, then the third. But everyone answered the same, and quat, we can and number 39, T afford it. And quat, finally he had to take the bird home. At the same time, rumors about a bird with golden feathers as beautiful as gold spread to the king and number 39's capital. The news reached the vizier, a blind Jew. The prime minister came before the king and said, Your majesty, there are many precious treasures in your treasury, but one thing is still missing. The golden bird. The king asks, where can I find a bird like that? The prime minister said, I heard that there is such a bird in your city. The king called the hunter into the capital. When the hunter stood before the king, the king immediately said, I heard that you have a golden bird. Bring it here to me, and I will reward you. If you disobey orders, you will be beheaded.
The hunter thought for a moment and then asked the king to wait one day so he could get the bird back from the buyer. King agreed. The next day the hunter brought the bird to the palace. The king ordered the gold to be returned to the hunter exactly equal to the bird and number 39's weight. A few days later the prime minister met the king again and said, Your Majesty, in your treasure trove there is everything except the bow of God. The king asked the prime minister, But who can find that palace for me? The prime minister replied, no one other than the hunter has that golden bird, your majesty. The king sent for the hunter again. When he arrived, the king asked, I heard you have a bow of God. Bring it here to me, you will be greatly rewarded. If you disobey, your head will be beheaded. The hunter thought for a moment and then replied, Please give me some time, noble king. Three days later I will answer the king. King agreed. The hunter went to a deserted place. When night came, he made a bed at the foot of a high mountain near a cave entrance to sleep. In the middle of the night, he woke up and saw a strange man a human with the head of a mule and two very long ears. One serves as a mattress for him to lie on, and the other serves as a blanket. It was challenging him to a sword fight. The hunter cried out, Wait! Before the match, I want to ask you something. Listen to me. What? The king ordered me to bring him a bow from God, otherwise he would behead me. The doll put down his sword and said, If so, you will have to go through a tough trial. I will give you more strength. The Lord and number 39. S. Bow was kept in the seventh kingdom of King La and number 39, S. Palace. Only once a week, on the day of Saba, a hundred soldiers wearing swords and carrying bows marched through the city. I and number 39, am willing to help you if you listen to what I say. If we succeed, we will get the bow, but if not we will die. The hunter replied, I will listen to your instructions. That monster pulled a strand of hair from his head and gave it to the hunter and said, Tomorrow morning, keep walking until you are tired, then take my hair and burn it, I will help you right away. As soon as the sun rose, the hunter woke up and set out. He kept walking and walking until he was exhausted. Only then did he burn the demon and number 39's hair and immediately the demon appeared before his eyes. The demon carried the hunter on his shoulders and flew into the sky. It flew and flew until it reached the gate of the seventh kingdom. It put the hunter on the ground and said, Wait here until the day Saba comes into the city. Go around, blend in with the crowd watching the Lord and number 39's procession. When the bow is brought to this place, ask people to let you touch it. Then you have to steal it right away. Then I will come to help you immediately. The hunter promised to do as the demon told him. He sat outside the city waiting for Saba to arrive. On the morning of Saba, the hunter entered the city and joined the crowd as he approached King La and number 39's palace. From afar he saw a procession approaching him. As the procession drew nearer, he saw a hundred soldiers raising their bows above their swords. The hunter cried out, Let me touch the bow a little. A soldier moved forward and the hunter grabbed the bow with all his strength. At that time, the sun was suddenly obscured by a dark cloud. That cloud is the devil. It jumped to the ground, picked up the bow and the hunter flew into the sky. In the blink of an eye, they were just a small dot high above. The soldiers had no way to chase. They had to give up. 
the hunter and the demon flew and flew until they reached a cave. The hunter informed the king and his officials that God and number 39's bow was there and asked the king to send soldiers to bring it back. The king, his officials and 1500 soldiers came and carried the bow on their shoulders and brought it back to the king and number 39's palace. Meanwhile, the demon pulled out a clump of hair and gave it to the hunter, saying, Take this strand of hair and when you need my help, burn a strand. Having finished speaking, the demon disappeared. But the blind mandarin still did not leave the king alone. One day he said again, Your majesty, you have everything in the palace except one thing. That is the beautiful fairy daughter of Sinsen. Hearing that, the king asked the prime minister, but who can bring her back to me? None other than the hunter brought back to his majesty the golden bird and god and number 39's bow. The king again ordered to find the hunter. When he arrived, the king asked, Bring this beautiful girl, the daughter of King Sinsen, to me, otherwise you will lose your head. The hunter had no choice but to obey the king. He returned home and divided the money he had into two parts. Part of him left his mother in case he didn't and hash 39t return. The other part he went to the market to buy a mule and flour. Then he said goodbye to his mother and set out to find Sinsen and hash 39's daughter. On the way, a huge group of ants climbed onto the mule and then crawled into the flower bag. Those ants are demons. They ate all the flour on the mule and number 39's back. After eating, the queen ant said to the hunter, Don and number 39, T be angry with us. We and number 39, re so hungry. In return, I and number 39, LL give you some of my beard. Whenever you need it or are in danger, burn it and we will come to help immediately. Saying that, the ants disappeared. The hunter continued walking until he was tired and no longer knew what the world was. He then took the hair of the first demon, the demon who helped him lift God and number 39, S. Bow, and burned it. Immediately the demon appeared and asked him, What do you need, sir? The king asked me to find Sinsen and Hash 39, S. Daughter. I Don and number 39, T. Know where to find her and I and number 39. I'm so tired, my legs Don and number 39, T. Want to walk anymore. That is a difficult task for you. Ninety-nine boys died because of her. And it and number thirty-nine, s very possible that he would be killed as well. The king will behead me if I don and number thirty-nine, t bring back Sinsen and hash thirty-nine, s daughter. So I and number thirty-nine, ll just give it a try, maybe I and number thirty-nine, ll be lucky. Otherwise, you and number 39, LL die anyway. The long-eared demon lifted the hunter onto his shoulders and flew into the sky. It flew to Sinsen and Hash 39's kingdom. It threw him onto the roof of the palace and disappeared. The hunter looked around and saw 99 men hanging. He thought to himself, and quat. They must be the ones who proposed to Sinsen and Hash 39's daughter but failed. And Quat, the hunter deftly climbed down into the palace garden. He walked in the garden and suddenly met King Sinsen. He quickly spoke up, Hello, father. Have a good evening dad. The king coldly replied, I am not your father. He was still gentle, Hello. I and number 39, am not your uncle either. What do you want? 
Your Majesty, I want to marry your daughter. The hunter did not dare reveal that he came here at the request of the king who ruled his kingdom. Because he thought that saying so would probably throw him away or kill him. King Sinsen advised, Don and number 39. T waste your time. 99 men have died because of that intention. I also like you, I Don and number 39. T. Want you to be the hundredth person. It and number 39. S okay, your majesty. I and number 39. LL try my luck. Maybe I and number 39. M the hundredth man and maybe I and number 39. LL get priority. Let fate decide. Okay. You must complete the two tasks I assigned you tonight. First you must draw out all the water in the cisterns and cisterns throughout my kingdom. Second, take 100 bags of corn mixed with rice and separate them into different types. If you complete this task tonight, I will give you my daughter in marriage. If not, he will suffer the same fate as the other 99 men. The hunter agreed. King Sinson disappeared. The hunter took two strands of hair out of his pocket and burned them. Immediately the long-eared demon appeared in front of him and said, What do you need, sir? My duty is to scoop out the water in the tanks and vessels of this kingdom. The demon yawned three times, and immediately the water stored in the tanks and barrels of that kingdom was all depleted. Meanwhile, the hunter continued to burn the queen ant and number 39, S. Antennae. The queen ant appeared before him and asked, What do you need, sir? I had to pick up a hundred bags of corn and rice mixed together into separate categories. That was Sinsen and Hash 39, S. Mission. The queen ant immediately called all the giant ants over and in the blink of an eye the corn was picked up separately, and the rice was also picked up separately. The next morning a crowd of people gathered in the city shouting, We have no water to drink. Children are dying of thirst. The fields are all dry. Cattle are also dying of thirst. Give us water. Water quickly. King Sinsen looked out the window and understood everything. He immediately called the hunter over and said, I know you succeeded. Then they both went down to the warehouse. There the bags of corn and rice were separated into each type. The king said again, Even this challenge you did well. But before I give you my daughter in marriage, you must fill all the water tanks and barrels for me, or my people will die of thirst. The hunter asked to kill two animals right before his eyes. When the two animals were killed, he immediately took out the hair of the long-eared demon and burned it. The demon immediately appeared. He whispered to it his request and in the blink of an eye, the water in the tanks and tanks of the entire kingdom was filled again. The wedding of the hunter and the beautiful princess of King Sinsen was held lavishly. The groom stayed at the palace for a month. During that time he did not dare touch the girl. Because according to custom, that beautiful girl was betrothed to his king. But Sinsen and Hash 39 S. Daughter and the hunter loved each other very much. A month passed, the hunter took an ant and number 39, S. Antennae and burned it. The queen ant appeared and he proposed, Bring me and King Sinsen and Hash 39, S. Daughter back to my country. The ant queen lifted the two people onto her shoulders and flew out of Sinsen and Hash 39, S. Kingdom. Before saying goodbye, the hunter asked the Ant Queen, Ant Queen, my daughter Sinsen and I love each other very much. But she is betrothed to our king. So what should I do? 
The queen ant replied, she will have to stay at the king and number 39's palace for a month. If after a month she still loves him, she will kill the king to marry him. Having finished speaking, the ant queen disappeared. The beautiful girl of Sinsen appeared before the king. She agreed to stay at the king and number 39's palace on the condition that he would kill a cow and blind the Jew before her eyes. The king sent a search throughout the kingdom for a blind Jew, but could find no one except his imagined official. Finally, the king decided to kill the prime minister. Meanwhile, the hunter waited for her in a deserted place near a cave. A month passed, Sinsen and Hash 39's daughter still only loved the hunter and did not love the king. One day she put poison in a cup of wine and brought it to the king. The king drank that cup of wine and died. Then she called the hunter back to the palace and they got married. The king died without an heir, so the people honored the hunter as king. He became king. He loved his people and he also loved his wife very much. The couple lived happily ever after. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.